The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has asked the 36 state governors to publish details and breakdown of payment of pensions to each of the former governors. And it seems the launching of Operation Amotekum has the potential to change security in Nigeria as other regions have begun moves to take similar initiative. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewiki. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Sera, is in the news again. And this time, it is asking the 36 governors to publish details and breakdown of payment of pensions to each of the former governors and other ex-officials, and also the details of ex-governors and other officials receiving pensions under their respective state pension laws between 1999 and 2011. 2019, I beg your pardon. Joining us to discuss this are two gentlemen. Um, we have uh, Olale Adigu, political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. And we also have Stanley Ima Imaruo. Thank Did I much. get it? Very well. Thank you very much for coming on the program. He's a legal uh, practitioner. Okay. I'll start with you. Uh, there was a landmark judgment um, about this case uh, in Lagos asking the Attorney General of the Federation to get us this, investigate the legality of all this pension that are being given uh, to um, former governors. Uh, the judgment is also asking them to recover uh, some of those uh, monies already given to ex-governors who are serving as ministers. Could you break this down for us, please? Yes, thank you very much. To start with, that particular judgment was about the most uh, laudable judgment handed down in 2019 by our court. You know that revolutionized our jurisprudence. What that judgment says in essence is that those governors who are today senators, perhaps a house of rep, if we have any, ministers across board, yet they were still collecting pension. They ordinarily were entitled to, as at the time they were governor. The court said, you cannot do that. That's double benefits. You are collecting allowances, salaries, as serving senator, as serving minister or house of rep member, and yet you are drawing life pension from your exposition as a governor. Whereas we have uh, civil servants and pensioners who have not been paid. The court has simply mandated the Attorney General of the Federation to take step and recover those uh, funds because uh, they were illegally collected. And if we do not do that, as a matter of fact, uh, it's a pity that someone who is occupying an exalted position of a senator or a minister will still stoop low to be collecting pension. But you won't blame them. That's human nature. Uh, the concept of survival comes first. If it's available well, it for them. it goes beyond survival. These are not hungry men. These are wealthy men. These are men who, on their individual rights, you, you can't be a poor man and say you want to come run for the position of governor. The, what I, when, I, when I say you can't blame them, I'm saying that they have institutionalized a law. You know, a kind of legalized what is morally wrong. And as such, they will tell you, look, they pay to us. You will recall Saraki, Senator Saraki, immediately that case was fired by Sarah. He said he wrote to the state. Of the state to stop paying him his pension. In other words, he was receiving it then, though he knew it was wrong, but because there was nothing challenging it, and because there was a law empowering the state to stop paying him, he could not just decide to play Father Christmas by saying, no, I won't collect. That is the point I'm trying to make here. Okay, so let's let's look at the Serap is always uh, pushing the conversation and the boundaries, especially when it comes to legal matters in this country, and they are requesting uh, for this before the lawsuit was filed. Uh, they had written a freedom of information um, information request to some of these state governors, asking them for the details um, in their statement. But of these governors that were approached, only two responded. Neither gave details of. Um, the, the monies that were expended to the, given to these people. They only told them these are the governors, as governors here, and all of that. Do you see this lawsuit that they filed now making any headway? If you ask me, the issue of ex-governors receiving 
uh, pension. It's something that ordinarily should challenge us as Nigerians, as Nigerian citizens, as active citizens, so that we know that public service is about service. It's what, it's, it, what, it's what it is. If a governor can go to the level of after I serve my eighth term or four years, as the case may be, and go to the Senate and still be called, it shows that something is deliberately wrong with our public service system. Because, one, you look at it. Yari, uh, former governor of Zamfara State, wrote under a letterhead paper, Office of the Former Governor, to Zamfara, a state that was beclouded by banditry, insecurity, to the extent that he resigned as chief security officer of the state at a particular time which shows the height of irresponsibility, the primary role of a state, according to Section 14 uh, of the Constitution of the state, according to Section 14 of the Nigerian Niger Constitution, is security and welfare of the people. I think uh, instead of rehashing, uh, he has mentioned some of the things yeah. you're saying now. What we're looking at, what is the possibility that this suit that's filed now will make us uh, see the light of day? But just hold on to your thoughts. Okay. Uh, when we come back, uh, you give us your response. And I've got a quick break. The conversation continues here. Very glad to know you're still with us. You're watching Plus Politics and Plus TV Africa. I still have my guest uh, with us um, here in the studio. And just before we went on that break, we're talking about the possibility of success for this uh, suit by Serap. Yes. I think Serap did the correct thing of what a responsible civil society should do. All, everything about us as a nation cannot be in the Constitution. Our nation is always evolving. Societies always evolve. Politics is about evolve about evolvement. Sorry. Now, in this case, Sarah, we have gotten to a point in our national lives where we need to define the conversation. We need this about the longest uh, 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 time, time we have spent under a democratic uh, rule in Nigeria for 20 years. In the Second Republic, Second Republic just lasted about four years, so we didn't really have governors who finished their service and continued. So this is like the first time it is happening. So at, at this point in our national lives, we can't be talking about just amending the constitution appropriate because the constitution is actually silent on that part of So we need the judiciary to make, as he, as he rightly said, to make the law, so to say, to, to test the law about the silence of the law, the spirit of the law, and that is what Serap have, uh, have done. So this is what people should be doing. Where the constitution is silent, we need to test the, uh, the possibility or the viability of the law itself and the constitution itself in court, and which, uh, in this regard, Serap did the correct thing. All right, uh, Stanley, let me ask you this. Yeah. yeah. Um, the governors, the ex-governors that are receiving pension include Bukola Saraki that we've mentioned. We also have people like uh, Timi Pre Silva, who is now a minister. We have uh, Chibik um, uh, Rutimi Amechi. Uh, we have Ralph Aregbe Shola. Okay, these men. But the, 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 let's look at the case of people like Akpabio, for instance. He was a governor, and then he became uh, a senator. And now he's a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. My question is, does it mean he is receiving pensions on all these three fronts. That's, the, that's, that's exactly the point. And that was what uh, governized uh, Sarah to approach the court. That is sheer criminality, gap with legality. And that the citizens are being denied what ordinarily should provide the basic amenities of life for them. As a matter of fact, it's not just about them taking pension. Sarah has approached the court, urging the court essentially ask uh, the federal, uh, that is the AG, to take steps and get this law abolished. We have to abolish this pension law across the states. They have to be abolished. The laws, there are laws empowering the, the, the respective state to pay pension, life pension, life pension, to ex-governors and other uh, ex-political office holders. So it's not a question of just merely stopping it. The, those laws have to be abolished. The, the case of Zam, okay, finish up. No, the case of Zamfara. Yeah, I was going to the governor. Add, the yes. governor. The governor made the yes, governor made attempt to uh, get uh, ten million naira, 10 million naira monthly, monthly. monthly. That was quote unquote within his rights when he did that, but it was morally bankrupt because you have a state that is uh, besieged by in insecurity and poverty that is literally walking on the streets. He had the moral high ground to put pen to paper to ask, notwithstanding the fact that that same governor had collected over 
half a billion naira on a monthly basis for the term it will serve. Because we have security votes. Across the state, the, the, there's hardly a government that takes less than half a billion naira. In a month, cumulatively, you have six billion naira, six billion naira collected by governor as security vote across the 36 states. That's about 210 billion naira. Okay, before I come back to you, um, Olalikon, I want to ask you this question. There are people who say that the motive behind the Zamfara uh, legislation was not really in the interest, uh, was not really primarily about the people, but to settle political scores. But does it really matter so long as that law that everybody says is obnoxious has been removed? First and foremost, ideas must be constantly encouraged to clash in the intellectual marketplace so that the best can be distilled for national growth and development. Irrespective of the political undertone, what the state government and the House of Assembly did, did quite laudable. And we are saying that that same position, that same step, should be replicated across all the states. It's immaterial. If politicians decide to fight, and then the masses benefit. You have roads everywhere. You have portable water, functional uh, hospital, schools. And so what? That is the essence of I governance. See. <laughs> I see your point. OK, let me come to you uh, come with this question about the, um, the law. Let's look at that pension law and look at because a lot of persons don't seem to understand um, the details of what this law is about. Just to read quickly um, some of that um, gratuities that they get. Furnished five-bedroom duplex, 300% of furniture replaceable every four years, free medical treatment for governor and deputy governor and their immediate families, car maintenance, drivers, security, um, two cars for, this is just for, there are states that have six cars uh, for the governor. Is it too much, considering that these men are Financially viable, even before they went in um, as governor, does this truly require an immediate action instead of a long-term conversation while they are still you know, getting stuff from the people? I think we should take a sort of introspection. These things are things that make political offices, office of the governor, deputy governor, very, very attractive. And these are some of the reasons why people make it like a do or die affair. Because if all I just need to do is be a governor for four years, I won't do anything. All I need to do is get my status of assembly to pass obnoxious uh, laws, bogus benefits for me after my service, even without anything, even if there's nothing to show for my service as governor. Do you understand what I'm trying? So now giving people, the, people who want to Commit, people want to kill themselves to, be, to, uh, to, to actually occupy these offices. This is what the, because we need to know the justification in terms of metrics. For example, you can tell me, you, during your eight years as governor of a state, security, in fact, your primary job as, a, uh, as the chief security officer of the state was nowhere to be. You, you, in fact, you were almost, it, it was almost an absentee case. You were almost living in Abuja. You were never staying in the state at any point. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you call, you will now make the state house of assembly, which we need to really, it's, an, it's a topic for another day, which almost is an extension of governor's offices in most states, which shows the weaknesses of our institution. So it's not the case that these houses of assemblies just pass you know, the, uh, the laws for these governors, because it's during the tenures of these governors that these laws are passed. So we need to shy away. We need not shy away uh, from the fact that, the pol as you rightly mentioned, politics or no politics, and like uh, uh, Mao Song rightly said, let 100 schools of thoughts contain, let, so that 100 flowers can blossom. Because if we are having clashes of ideas like this, it's when so that is what makes societies grow. Okay, let me ask you this question. Are we complicit as a people? Because um, this did not just start from way back. I think it became popular from like 2005 or seven or thereabout when we had the Lagos state scenario. And then it seemed to catch on to other states who now enacted laws uh, for this government. What are we doing as a people? Are we allowing this? Because this law didn't just come. It went through first reading, second reading, third reading. Are our lawmakers sleeping? Now, the issue is we need a very conscious citizenry. Politicians, by their nature, will want to do whatever they like. And you know, in this game of politics, elephant can fly. I want to actually fish water with basket. So you need a very 
conscious populace, maybe a critical minority, to be on this issue constantly. And we have to enlarge the conversation. It's not just about stopping serving senators, serving ministers or ex governors from collecting pension while they are in, in, in office, while they are serving. We are saying the pension laws. For example, we have some governors who are not uh, in the National Assembly or, or, or are not uh, ministers. They are still collecting pension. Omogwa some. The entire, entire pension law should be reviewed, if not completely uh, abolished. So that is the, you are, now the list you, you, you read that there, that's a limited list. You have some states where some governors are entitled to solid building accommodation in their states, and, and then the another in Abuja. So let's not limit it to what we have here. Yeah, of so course we know it's why this yeah. is just a sniper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. A it's a minimum. terrible situation. They have legalized corruption. Yeah. And when you are in court, the ob objection of the EGF is that to that suit by Serap was that a law was duly passed to die effect, and that Serap allowed the locals to challenge the court. So. Of course, the court took a refuge under the constitution. After all, no state governor or a, a AG of a state would challenge any law. We've not seen it. In this country, now that some persons have been conversing that the office so of the, the attorney, general, attorney general should be separated from the other office, so that you can have a sort of an ombudsman, somebody in government challenging the position of government on some salient issues. So, what, issues what, what, that we, what is the challenge before the legislature now in this matter? The challenge before them is simply how to fashion the way out of this. But the courts. The court, we have to rely more on the court in this regard. Serap has just approached the court. The court should be fair. Bear in mind, if politicians want to take decisions, they sit down and they deliberate first reading, second reading, as we said, third reading, and they have passed the law. But the court can invalidate laws. Yes. Politicians will always seek to protect themselves. And once you are used to that public uh, office, these poets, Okay, you do not want to let go. So the court must constantly intervene. I will salute the judge for having that judicial mindset to command the AGF to do the need for the circus now. So we need more of this kind of judicial intervention because the law, indeed, the living law is what the court says it is, not what the lawmakers may have done. Lekon, the, yeah. the, 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 Zamfara, the Zamfara State um, government, um, legislature has taken the bold step to you know, repeal the old law that is there. Well, based on how we operate as a country, do you see this truly spreading to other states or we're just going to have conversations like this and then um, nothing much will happen? In my opinion, the Zamfara issue just, uh, is just a tipping point uh, in this uh, matter because the letter of uh, Yari got uh, the attention of social media and the whole, uh, that, so that, 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 that provided the ripple effect that was needed. And that's why a lot of people even know that, oh, a state like Zamfara can be, uh, you can be demanded the, the, moral, the, uh, uh, the, the, the moral dimension to the discussion. However, these kind of conversations are very interesting if we truly, as citizens, begin to focus on issues around us, starting first from the local governments to the state government. Because a lot of people don't seem to be aware. What a lot of people know about Nigeria is probably what happens in Abuja, and understandably so. What is the process of passing laws at the states? Many people don't even attend uh, uh, public hearings when they come call, call, call for bills. A lot of people don't seem to show uh, uh, interest. How many Nigerians, for example, know their state's House of Assembly member representing them in their constituencies? How many of them even bother to engage? How many of them even visit constituency offices? How many of them even... Because it takes lawmakers to pass these legislations. And lawmakers would not bother, would not bother about citizens who don't care. If the, if the lawmaker is aware that your next election, you are coming back to this constituency. And the process of uh, recall in section uh, 69 and section 110 of the 1999 constitution, uh, well, the constitution, I think that process is very, very technical until the, I think uh, Dino Melai was, and the pro no, nobody has been recalled because the power of the citizens have been limited even by the constitution because it makes the process unnecessarily cumbersome. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And un understandably, because our constitution is very, very rigid, uh, 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 which means it, it, it takes a very special procedure to amend it. However, we need a citizenry that is very conscious, that knows what 
you know, what is happening around them. We can't just keep keeping quiet and pretend that all is well. It, all right. th things like this shouldn't be happening in the 21st century. Yeah, before I let you, uh, gentlemen, go, I would like to ask this question. Uh, Pastor Adeboye is uh, somebody that's well known in this country and a lot of persons respect his words. And uh, he, he's spoken up and suggested as one way to help solve this problem that the salaries of governors should be slashed by 50% so that those money, what is out of it, can be used to do other infrastructure and medical um, emergencies that we might have. What's your take on that in, in a minute, if you can? Yeah, uh, thankfully, the clergy, they are coming out gradually. Instead of sitting in church and praying that God should touch the hearts of our rulers, they have decided that it is time to speak out. They should not just stop there. They should continuously galvanize their members everywhere, even on social media, to demand good governance. We cannot pray stable electricity into existence. We cannot pray good drugs into existence. We cannot pray functional uh, uh, hospitals and schools into existence. Once we have the clergymen come forth this way and begin to demand good governance, things will uh, tend to get better. Fantastic uh, uh, intervention by the uh, GEO. Uh, while I agree and I understand what he's trying to say, the, it's, uh, his opinion is premised on the fact that, okay, uh, uh, the basic salaries of governors and politicians is just fair. But what about the, all these allowances, bogus allowances they call? Who, who legislates, for example, the issue of security vote that is largely unaccounted for? All these things are things, because what, what is even the question of secrecy? in public accounts. That is even the aspect I have. Because how much is the benefit of a governor per month? Apart from the basic salary that seems to be, what are the, you know, uh, it's not just governors now, senators, we don't even know the amounts they are even going on with per month. The, the uh, uh, what's it called, has been, uh, we are just speculating about how much they are collecting. So the question of secrecy needs to first be addressed. Let's know how much our public officers are going on with every month. Since we know how much our uh, civil servants are going on with every month, our, we know how much the corporate world is going Why shouldn't we know how much our public servants are going on with monthly? Still much to talk about, but we need to move on to the next segment of the show. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your thoughts so far. Thank you very much. Right, uh, we'll go on a short break, and when we return, how Amot Dekun can shape Nigerian security is up for discussion. Stay with us.